Hey guys, this is RD Techie, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the main things you should focus on when you're making a loadout, no matter what weapon class, as far as a new, inexperienced, or beginner uh, player is concerned in Call of Duty Cold War. I will see you with all the details on the other side of the intro. Right, so Cold War started off uh, last month. It's been going great. And in less than a day, tomorrow, you're going to have the first season come out. And the game is on sale. So we might have some new players out there who are joining the game who have just started playing it and might not know how to deck up their guns to make them feel more comfortable. And that's why I thought I'll do it as a beginner as someone who's inexperienced uh, compared to the other uh, YouTubers who focus on content with COD, uh, and I am not as good as any of those people, please trust me. Um, <laughs> I thought I would just go through and tell you things that you should probably look at. I've been leveling up guns with the double XP weekend, and I've gotten all of them, most of them to level 50, or in the case of secondaries to level 30, so I can do the camo challenges on zombies. So I'm going to start with this, even though this is a wrongly named loadout. We're going to start with an assault rifle. And uh, basically, I'm going to pick the assault rifle to show you what to use. But the same concept. I'm going to show two guns, one American gun and one Russian gun. And the same concept works across um, all things, right? All these loadouts. Now, I can make five videos, 10 videos, 15 videos about different class guides. And I might, down the line, I might do like specific class guides where I look at one gun I enjoy and say, this is the stuff I'm working with, enjoy it. And, uh, but this is just a thing, a uh, quick video to point out. These are the attachments that if you're a new player, when you get access to them, use them. And just because you unlock a newer thing does not mean you should use it, basically. So I'm going to start with the XM4. I do not like this gun very much. It's one of my favorite guns when it comes to uh, Modern Warfare or Warzone. And I'm running the gunfighter thing. I'm just going to change that to Lawbreaker or whatever. So I get the four, five. So 90% of the people will either be running a Lawbreaker or Perk Breed, I imagine. I enjoy gunfighter because it gives me a lot of attachments. And I really do enjoy having the gun decked out but that's a personal preference uh perk greed has been very nice as well because i can get two perks and i put the ghost and cold-blooded and i'm like a freaking you know you can't even see me right my dog is going crazy but let's go into the game so as soon as you get um an optic thing uh if you're playing with an assault rifle you want some of that range put the vision tech it's a very good optic. It takes a little bit of getting used to because it's 2x compared to most 1.3 or 1.25x uh, optics you usually see in Cold War and with assault rifles. But it is very good. It's very good uh, optic to get used to and you can, uh, you know, get uh, edit your reticles and it'll be much easier for you to manage with it as well. So when it comes to muzzle, I always the first thing you unlock is the muzzle brake. Put that on. And wait till you unlock the infantry, put that on, and then if you and when you unlock the SOCOM, you put that on. So SOCOM, I, in my opinion, is the best because you want to focus on mainly two or three or four things when you're making a gun. The main thing for me is vertical recoil. That's what makes the gun go up. And 90% of these guns, when you shoot, they will go at least slightly up. So if you tone down vertical recoil, that's a win for you. Horizontal recoil is a secondary concern. And I know you're losing some here, but you will make it up later in the build. So don't worry about it. And then I go with range, bullet velocity. Damage is great, but I'm not one who's worried about damage because the damage increments come at a very high cost to recoil. If you can handle a high recoil gun, gun you can definitely handle uh put on something that gives you more damage but my opinion and my advice is to eliminate vertical and horizontal recoil first and foremost and then work on the rest so uh when you're starting off you're gonna go with the muzzle brake because that's the first one of the first things you unlock infantry compensator or socom uh, socom eliminator will do it 
SOCOM is the best thing. Once you unlock all of them, put SOCOM in. You won't regret it. So I'm going to leave it at muzzle break, though, because you're starting off. When it comes to barrel, um, the first one you unlock is very good. It's very nice. But the reinforced heavy is the one you want to try to get to. And once you get it, stick with it. I never go for the task force unless uh depends on the gun. So assault rifles, they're okay for me. I don't go for it. And uh, some guns, I don't go for... It, it, it depends on your personal taste and how it feels. But personally, I would say reinforced heavy. You're not losing much here. This may seem like a lot of speed loss, but you're losing aim walking speed. So you're not rolling down right click and walking a lot in COD. You're running around right clicking as need be and shooting. And you only use 4% move speed. So that's a good one. When you unlock Task Force, I would say try it on and feel how it works. But that recoil, it, it gives a pretty bad uh, thing. If you can handle recoil, go for Task Force. If not, stick to Reinforced Heavy. And then as soon as you unlock it, put Steady Aim Laser on. Or if you're someone who stays way behind and almost only engages long and medium range, go for the Mounted Flashlight or the SOF. Because these are all green, all good. You don't have to lose anything for it. But if you're someone who runs into action, and I tend to do that, steady aim laser. From that, once you unlock SWAT, go for SWAT. And then when you unlock Ember Sighting Point, go for that. Don't worry about this time too much. We will catch it up later down the line. So I'm going to put, not Ember Sighting, sorry. I'm going to put the steady aim because that's one of the first things you will unlock. And foregrip is amazing to unlock. Well, as soon as you get it, put it on. And then go next. Ignore all three of these. I will not, uh, I never use them. I will never use them because after four grip, I'll go right to field agent. These are the only two f uh, grips I bother with. So four grip or field agent. So four grip is the first to unlock. We're going to put that on. And when it comes to mag, when you have five attachments, you're going to have to make a choice. You can either take away, uh, if you're not someone who uses hip fire, you can take that away. You're not going to lose anything. Or you can take away an optic and stick to iron sights. If you can take away an optic and stick to iron sight, put down a speed mag. Wait till you unlock a speed mag and then swap out. As far as handle and stock, I don't use them for assault rifles. You can if you want. Or in my opinion run a gunfighter perk if you want and when you unlock it that way you can have one of each and you have no issues but that's the american based weapon so the things we eliminated are basically uh accuracy uh the, not eliminated the vertical recoil and horizontal recoil as well as we got a lot of bullet velocity range and that helps our firepower and accuracy what we see as this red line is looks big but you have to understand 20% of it is just aim walking speed. So unless you right click and walk down corridors a lot, which you can do, but unless you don't do that, a majority of you might probably not be doing that. You'll ADS when you need to. You won't feel a difference as far as speed is concerned. Now I'm going to pick another gun, which is a Russian based gun. It's the AK-47. If you have the Iron Curtain unlocked when you buy the game, Use it to start things off and then uh, edit as you go. So, but I have the whole gun pretty much unlocked, uh, except for, I think, a couple of things. So I'm going to stick with just the basic one. Again, optic is up to you. Uh, you can use uh, the vision tech. Pretty good to use. But once I unlock, I meant forgot to mention this. Once I unlock microflex, I tend to just use microflex. I don't like using uh, the 2x once I have Microflex, because Microflex has a very thin out. So while you're aiming down sight, you can still see most of what's around you. And that's something that's very cool for me. Hawksmore used to be my favorite, but uh, Microflex is winning out consistently now. So I'm using Microflex nonstop if I can get my hands on it. Here, when you whatever you read SOCOM and the other one, you're going to read Spetsnaz or KGB here. So field agent will be Spetsnaz and KGB is going to be SOCOM. So KGB Eliminator is the one you want to get as soon as it unlocks. Till then, run with the muzzle brake, no issues. And when uh, the infantry compensator in the um, American-based guns, you will be called Spetsnaz. Put that on when you unlock that and then wait till KGB and put that on. Yeah, you're not going to lose anything, but I'm going to start with the muzzle brake. No issues there. And again, here, when it comes to this, you want to go for VDV reinforced. 
But this gun is one I've used quite a bit. You can put Spetsnaz RPK barrel. You won't feel too much recoil because the gun itself, it's quite steady once you put the other attachments on. Uh, VDV reinforced though, you will not have any issues. You're getting a lot of range and velocity for 4% sprinting move speed. Uh, and the other one is aim movement speed, which you won't notice anyway. So, but this is very good to have. You lose some horizontal recoil. That is okay because this gun is more against vertical recoil. And we're already compensating that with a, uh, by that time, a KGB eliminator, which gives us 17% vertical recoil. So you will, kind of offset the difference. But if you're not feeling comfortable with the recall, switch back to a VDV reinforced barrel. And that's the one you're gonna unlock fairly easily uh, earlier in the thing. So I'm gonna put that on. When it comes to body, uh, I will say again, steady aim laser for hip fire. If you're someone that does hip fire, if you're not doing hip fire, go for the mounted flashlight. And then when you unlock it, the KGB target designer. And if you're still hip firing, go for steady aim laser from that to GRU, F uh, five megawatt, and then go to uh, Ember sighting point. So if you're ADS, go for KGB. That's, that's the one. If you're only ADSing, that's the one you want. Ignore everything else. If not, go for the Ember Sighting Point. They're very actually nice. It's it's really a lot of fun to use the Ember Sighting Point because it highlights, even when you're moving your uh, gun around without ADSing, it highlights the enemy. And under barrel, oh, actually, I forgot to put that on. I'm gonna put the Steady Aim Laser because I do like some hip fire capabilities. Foregrip is the first thing you unlock. Foregrip, again, is the best thing you can put. Spetsnaz Grip is the other thing that once you level it and lock it, go for Spetsnaz Grip, because that's my personal favorite. You get 6% recoil control and 20% horizontal recoil control. You're losing shooting move speed. Shooting move speed is when you shoot, how much speed it takes away. So unless you're running and shooting all the time, when you slide up, pull up and shoot, it won't make a difference to you. So you're not losing that much. Spetsnaz Grip will serve you well. Spetsnaz Speed Grip, some people swear by it. I just like more recoil control over there, so I just use that. Now, you're going for the magazine. You can put the 40 round on, but I would say wait for a speed mag. Um, to be honest, even if you just use the regular default mag that the AK comes with, no wrong there. But uh, I prefer to use a wire stock instead of the mag because it takes the sprint to fire time away and you're not losing anything. Uh, but once you level it up, you can use the skeleton stock, the hip fire accuracy. If you're someone you aim down sight, that's no problem. If you are someone who hip fires, you want to stick to the skeletal stock or the wire stock, I'm sorry, or put a speed round in. So speed round mags, always easy to re reload and you don't have to worry about many of those things. So those are the two things. No matter which guns you look at, I'm going to go to submachine guns, MP5. And I'll tell you exactly. See, SOCOM barrel is going to be called reinforced heavy. Under barrel is going to be called field agent. They're going to carry the names. Focus on these names. And I think you should have a very good experience as a starter. Once you get used to the game, definitely mod them around, swap out things, sacrifice some recoil control to see if you can get better damage. That is all fair. But this is just for someone who's starting. Uh, Cold War or, or just FPSs in general and want to kind of make their guns feel a little more bearable. These are the things you should kind of focus on. Vertical recoil, horizontal recoil, damage range, velocity, and then damage. That is my way of looking at it. And if you hip fire, obviously hip fire accuracy. But when you're starting off, you may not hip fire too much. Uh, I don't know. I personally had a hard time ADSing. Then I had to train myself to ADS. Now I have a hard time hip firing, so I don't know. That's uh, totally up to you. But these are the uh, principles of which I build my loadout. When it comes to um, perks, you can use Lawbreaker, but I would say go for Perk Greed. If you're only using five attachments, that way you can get uh, Flak Jacket and, uh, and Tactical Mask. Then I would put Assassin on because it gives you extra score, which is really good when you're starting off. And I would also put uh, Scavenger. I wouldn't bother with Scavenger when you're starting off. I'd put Quartermaster and Ghost and Cold-Blooded. That takes you away from any 
AI targeting system. You can walk up to a turret, you won't get hurt. And if in case you are someone that only runs three perks, these are the three perks I like to run with. And I will always recommend these three, which is the Flak Jacket, the Assassin, and Cold Blooded. These three are very, very good. And uh, I would then, in that case, if you're only running with three perks, I would say get Gunfighter and unlock all the attachments you need. That way, any attachments you add to the gun will just make it stronger and stronger. With five attachments, these guns are very good. But with eight attachments, they're unbelievable. Trust me on that. But that's it for this video. Let me know if this helped. I will be doing more class guides. And I think I can do a weekly class guide on one specific gun I'm using that week. And uh, let me know what you guys thought. And I will also quickly, very quickly, tell you what guns I like on each class. In Assault Rifles, my favorite gun, I keep knocking my mic thing, sorry about that, uh, is the AK-47. Hands down, the best assault rifle right now. In SMGs, I don't like the MP5 in this game. I love it in the other ones, but my favorite is the Bullfrog. Really, really well-made uh, well gun. This is the Bison from uh, Modern Warfare and Warzone. Bullfrog is really good. Good range, good damage, good fire rate, and you can control it once you get some attachments done. And the tactical rifles, of course, these two are reigning, uh, you know, supreme right now, but they are heading for a mat... Uh, pretty big nerf go for the dmr very 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 effective long range you can do very quick shots and you can take a lot of damage off of your enemies and then when it comes to uh lmgs i know everyone loves the stoner right now they're saying it's the most op gun for me the m60 reigns supreme every time i play it that's my pick when it goes to snipers pellington so far is hands down so much better than the tundra i've just felt Tundra is great for reload, but Pellington just feels more tighter when you shoot. So those are my picks. And when it comes to hand secondaries, I would say Hauer is great for multiplayer. Uh, either of the shotguns are good. Uh, pistols, I would go 1911, but Diamati, Diamati, I just started unlocking things for, and it's been amazing. So I guess it, Diamati becomes like a beast. So that's like, it's, it reminds me of Renetti. You get the burst, you get, once you get Akimbo unlocked, you're going to be unstoppable. Launchers, uh, their launchers you know sigma is great because you can lock and take down uavs and stuff and that's going to be useful to get you points when you start off so that's a good secondary to have melee knife it's it's a knife uh uh and special i haven't used at all so i couldn't tell you but it's a grenade launcher i'm gonna be leveling all these up because i want to level it up in zombies and get the camo the dark eighth thing but that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. And if it did, and if you would like some specific gun class to be done, let me know. I will do it. And uh, other than that, that's it. This is RD Techie saying thank you for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, thank you so much for the support on YouTube. I would not have imagined that would cost 600 subs. And most of those subs came in the last three months from the COD community. So I'm very, very, very thankful to all of you. I appreciate the support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Goodbye.